history of the web and JavaScript is truly fascinating. So I created this to help web developers and JavaScript engineers know about it and learn from it. It all began in the 1960s during the Cold War when the US wanted to create a new way to communicate and send documents across the US in case of a nuclear attack. Although the ideas were invented and many of the building blocks were created, it was not really accessible till the early 90s. What's really fascinating to me is that Ted Nelson proposed the idea of hypertext 50 years ago that eventually became what we now call as HTML. The hyper in hypertext means beyond text, meaning you should be able to describe things like lists, tables, pictures, and so on and so forth. And in 1974 to 1982 timeframe, Windsurf and Bob Kahn created the backbone of the internet, TCP IP. And once TCP IP came out, a lot of teams across the world in various labs started to experiment and try to create internet. And it was not until 1990, the internet as we know it was actually created. In 1990, Sir Tim Berners-Lee was working at CERN's lab, which is a European nuclear research facility. And then he knew about TCP IP and he also knew about the idea of hypertext. And he combined the two and create the internet as we know it. And in order to do that, he actually created a markup language called HTML, hypertext markup language that was inspired by SGML. And then he also created the world's first browser that essentially allowed uh, anyone to edit the HTML document, which was later renamed as Nexus. And he also created the world's first server called as HTTPD, D stands for daemon. And in order to connect the client and the server, he created a new protocol called HTTP on top of TCP IP and essentially created the world's first website. So this picture here is actually the world's first server. You may notice that there is a little sticker on it that says do not power down this machine. And this is the world's first website. You can still go to this URL and then you can actually see all the ideas that he put forth and how the World Wide Web actually works. And after that, he founded World Wide Web Consortium to create standards for the web and bring in commercial players. Around the same time in 1993, Mark Andreessen was a graduate student at uh, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, UIUC, and he was working at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications, NCSA department. And he and Eric Bina created a browser called NCSA Mosaic, and it turns out it was really good and it became very popular, and everyone started using it. In 1994, Mark Anderson graduated and then he came to Silicon Valley and then he created a startup called Mosaic Communications and ended up creating a browser called Netscape Navigator. And it really took off, but then there were rumors that Microsoft was coming up with something similar. And that brings us to the era where a lot happened. Things were very chaotic. If you were a web dev at this time, you would have gone crazy. Uh, remember, at this point in time, Microsoft was cooking something. And to one of that, Mark Andreessen wanted to bring interactivity to the browser. He wanted some script or some programming language to dynamically change parts of the loaded HTML document. So he ended up hiring Brendan Eich to create that programming language. So in a sense, the job included creating a rudimentary set of APIs to manipulate parts of the HTML document, and then a programming language that can call these APIs, and thirdly, a compiler that can actually load the script that is written in this programming language and execute a script. And when it executes a script, the script calls these APIs and manipulates the HTML document. By this time, you probably already realized that these APIs are actually nothing but the DOM APIs. And the coolest part is Brendan Eich created the JavaScript, the compiler, and the way to load it, and rudimentary DOM APIs in 10 days. And they ended up shipping it in their Netscape Navigator in mid-1995. It's just incredible. 
and it was also the root cause of some of the weirdness in JavaScript. Just remember that. All right, moving on. Enter Microsoft. Microsoft came up with its own browser called Internet Explorer 3. And it turns out it was built on top of NCSA Mosaic, a license from Spyglass Inc., which in turn had licensed it from EYUC. So you now have two browsers with the same origin. And the browser also had a scripting language called JScript. And again, it turns out that it was created by reverse engineering JavaScript. But Microsoft could not call it JavaScript because Java and JavaScript were trademark of Sun Microsystems, now part of Oracle. But Netscape somehow had cut some deal to call it JavaScript. So you now had two browsers with same origin and they both had same scripting language and it started the so-called first browser wars. The browser wars led to a lot of discrepancies and proprietary technologies and it caused a lot of problems to web developers and that led to the creation of various web standards. First up, ECMAScript. Mark Andreessen gave JavaScript to a standards company called ECMA International and asked them to create a standard based on JavaScript. ECMA International then took about a year and came up with the first version of the standard called ECMAScript 1.0. They then went on and created ECMAScript 2.0 and then ECMAScript 3.0 uh, in the following years. After that standard was created, JavaScript and JScript were updated to implement this ECMAScript standard. In other words, ECMAScript is a standard and JavaScript and JScript are implementations of this standard. Meanwhile, at W3C, they were standardizing HTTP. They came out with a HTTP 1.0 in 95 and then HTTP 1.1 in 1996. Around the same time, there were also requests to the computer science community to come up with a way to easily style the HTML. And these two gentlemen came up with CSS, Cascading Style Sheet. The idea was that you could style a parent element in the HTML document and the style would cascade down to the child and grandchild and everybody liked it and it became a thing. And W3C was interested in uh, standardizing it and they came out with the first version of CSS called CSS Level 1 in 1996 and the second version of CSS called CSS Level 2 in 1998. And around the same time, a different group inside W3C was standardizing HTML. And they came up with various versions of HTML between 1995 and 1999. Uh, so in 1999, they settled on HTML 4.01. And that kind of became the standard all the way till 2014 when HTML5 came out. By the way, this logo is the old HTML logo. And as you can imagine, if you were building any websites, forget about web applications, you would have gone crazy because the standards themselves were changing. While various standards were being established, in the business space, the first browser wars came to an end and Microsoft had won the first browser wars. Uh, this is because of various reasons. First of all, Microsoft came up with Internet Explorer 5 and 6, and which were much faster than Netscape and Windows operating system went mainstream. Microsoft also cheated a little bit by rewarding vendors to ditch Netscape and hit some technologies from Netscape and so on. In the meantime, Netscape got bought by AYL and they kind of created a bunch of versions of Netscape that were buggy and slow and they crashed a lot and essentially lost the browser war. And Microsoft uh, ended up taking 80 to 90% of market share by the end of 2001. And that brings us to the time frame between 2001 and 2005. Standards didn't change much except for DOM, but the biggest surprise was this thing called AJAX, Asynchronous JavaScript and XML, that became very popular and actually caused a JavaScript renaissance. And it also started the second browser wars. And this may come as a surprise to many, there was actually Microsoft that created what became known as AJAX, and that too in 1999 itself, 
Microsoft had a team that were dealing with XML and they ended up creating, they essentially invented a way to send XML documents back and forth asynchronously between the server and the browser. But they had implemented this thing in a proprietary language called ActiveX. And it so happens that JScript, their version of JavaScript, had some additional features where it could actually talk ActiveX. So if you're building for Microsoft's Internet Explorer, you could actually do Ajax back in 1999 itself. And this meant Netscape had to catch up a lot. So Netscape funded a foundation called Mozilla Foundation. And they ended up reverse engineering this ActiveX library and then created a JavaScript object called XML HTTP request that could do the exact same thing as the Microsoft's proprietary library. And Mozilla Foundation created a different browser called Firefox that could also do Ajax. But although Ajax was there since 1999, and it was even there in Firefox in 2002-2003 timeframe, not many people had actually done anything with it until Google actually came up with two incredibly complex applications, Gmail and Google Maps, that were built primarily on Ajax. That essentially showed everyone that you could build complex cross-browser applications, performs really well like desktop applications, all in the browser. It was unimaginable until then to build browser applications that work like desktop applications, and that too, cross-browser applications. And this led to a renaissance in JavaScript, and everybody wanted to build really large complex applications from that point onwards. And that brings us to 2005 to 2009 timeframe. During this time, everyone wanted to build complex desktop-like applications in the browser. Firefox had great developer tools, so a lot of people started building for Internet Explorer, which had a huge market share, and for Firefox. Browsers like Firefox, Safari, Opera, and others started to make dent into IE's dominance, but that led to another problem. It was really hard to build complex applications that was also cross-browser. Enter JavaScript libraries. The main goal of these JavaScript libraries was to help customers build cross-browser applications by wrapping the browser API's inconsistencies within themselves. Meanwhile, there was a lot of appetite to enhance ECMAScript standards to fix some of the issues of earlier JavaScript. ECMA International created a technical committee called TC39 to start working on the next generation of ECMAScript. Soon they came up with some enhancements like strict mode to fix some of the issues of JavaScript weirdness. And that became ECMAScript 5 and they started working on a major revision to the ECMAScript called ES6. Around the same time, in 2009, Node.js was invented by Randall. This literally gave another boost to the JavaScript community. They suddenly had capability to build lots of tools that other programming languages had, and Node.js took JavaScript to new heights that was unimaginable prior to Node.js. And that brings us to time frame 2009 through 2015. 2009 was the peak of second browser wars. Browsers like Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari were all enhancing performance of their respective JavaScript engines to win over developers. But from seemingly nowhere, Google came up with the Chrome browser and took the market share from everyone, especially Internet Explorer. Along the way, it almost killed off Firefox. In the meantime, various technology standards matured and were implemented in various browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, to a great extent, if not all. Around the same time, this thing called frameworks became popular. Although they were there even earlier, frameworks like Backbone.js, Ember, and others said, you know, we are going to reduce the amount of code you write and kind of took control of how you write your apps. And while these frameworks suddenly solved a lot of problems in building large and complex apps, these 
uh, frameworks also introduced newer concepts, newer rules, and newer constraints, and ended up adding lots of complexities in building apps. And to solve the problems that these frameworks created, newer and newer frameworks were created almost on a weekly basis and at sometimes even on a daily basis. To, in some perspective, it actually caused a lot more headache. And that led to creation of Tool MVC, and which became popular because it provided a place for developers to compare different frameworks and use the ones that they like. And another interesting thing happened around the same time. Things called CSS frameworks, such as Twitter Bootstrap, Foundation, became popular. They made it very simple to create beautiful websites without even knowing CSS. And that brings us to 2015 to 2017 timeframe. And a lot of things started became popular and the way we write JavaScript started to completely change. Components based frameworks became popular. So the idea is to divide your app into multiple reusable components and then put them back together. And also the concept of quote unquote web components started to take shape. The idea is you can write these components in any framework and then reuse it in other frameworks. And quite a lot of other ideas like compile to JavaScript, compile to CSS, virtual DOM, Webpack, and all these things started to become popular and cause JavaScript fatigue. Let's take a look at some of these in details. Although compiled to JavaScript languages like CoffeeScript appeared in 2009, it's actually Babel that made it popular. Babel made it popular by allowing users to use ES 2015, ES 2016, and even ES 2017, the future JavaScript, even though browsers did not support them because you could easily write in any of these things and then convert them to regular JavaScript using Babel. And that brings us to React. React, although introduced in 2013, really became popular in 2015. React popularized the idea of using virtual DOM for performance reasons. They also made CSS in JavaScript, HTML in JavaScript popular. And React also made build tools like Webpack popular. Around the same time, type system was brought into JavaScript from other programming languages to help reduce errors like runtime errors. And all these new technologies and new ideas, and new ways of building JavaScript applications and web applications have led to JavaScript fatigue. And that brings us to the end of our presentation. But here is the good news. If history is our guide, expect standards to emerge and things to become relatively stable in the coming years. Expect future tools to abstract away a lot of things. And also expect smaller and simpler frameworks. Just to summarize, in the 1960s, internet was created, but it was not available until 1990. In 1990, internet as we know it was created. In between 95 and 2001, there was JavaScript, CSS, and various standards were created. Between 2001 and 2005, nothing much really happened except for this thing called Ajax. Between 2005 and 2009, Ajax put spotlight on JavaScript, and libraries like jQuery and other things came out. Node.js was invented. And between 2009 and 2015, Google from nowhere came out with Google Chrome browser and essentially won the second browser wars and took the market share from Internet Explorer and other things. And there were also a lot of frameworks like Angular and other things became popular. 2D MVC was created to compare frameworks. And between 2015 and 2017, a lot happened. The way we write JavaScript itself changed. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned from it. Hope you are better because of it. Thank you very much.